Hello, my lovely friends. It is me, Julia from Made by the Chef. I am back. And what have I got for you today? Well, something very exciting. We are going to be making Turkish pide. Now, if you've ever known about Turkish pide, maybe you've been to North London, where you get a lot of the Turkish restaurants uh, all along Harringay, along Green Lanes, you would have had that pide experience. So pide essentially is the Turkish word for a type of bread. Pide, so the pide is essentially um, shaped, a special shaped dough, a bit like a pizza, um, but amazing. It has got so many different ingredients in it. So you can have spinach in there, you can have cheese in there, you can have meat, salami, whatever you fancy. And it is absolutely divine. So without further ado, let's make the dough. So easy, we've done this before, simple as anything. I've got 500 grams of, in fact, I'm using a Turkish flour, just all purpose Turkish flour, but you can use strong flour um, and you could even, to be honest, use plain, okay? In the bowl, um, I'm gonna now add a bit of salt. So that's about a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna mix that in. Then I'm gonna add some sugar. So I've probably got about half a teaspoon, generous half a teaspoon of sugar. And then I'm gonna add my sachet of yeast. And I'm using a whole sachet. So this is fast action dried yeast. And I'm just gonna get that in there, sprinkle that in, give it a mix. And now I'm gonna make a little hole in the center and make like a well. Now what makes this dough so lovely and fluffy and soft and just so Moorish to eat uh, is a mixture of olive oil, which you've got a bit of oil in there, and yogurt. Yes, I'm putting yogurt in there. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour my olive oil in. I've got about 50 mils here. And then I've got two tablespoons of just natural yogurt. Doesn't matter if it's low fat, full fat, whatever it is, just bung it in. So I've got two tablespoons of yogurt going in. Mixing now, I'm gonna mix the olive oil and the yogurt together, just in the middle, center of the flour. And then I'm gonna add my water. Now you probably need about 350 mils. Use lukewarm water, doesn't matter if you use cold, just make sure you don't use anything that's too hot. Best way to measure lukewarm water is to use one part boiling hot water from the kettle and two parts of cold water from the tap. That will give you a good, decent, lukewarm temperature. Now I'm just gonna keep adding the water and mixing it. And the best way when you're making a dough or pastry or anything like that is don't try and grab all the flour at once. What you wanna do is you wanna start forming the dough in the center and then you wanna just gradually start pulling lots of dry flour from the sides. That way, if you end up with a dough that's a little bit too wet, you've still got flour to pull into it. And then, but if you've all tried to actually add all the flour at once and just grab everything all together and stick it all together and then you find your dough's a bit stiff or a little bit dry it's really hard to then add moisture to that now my dough is looking lovely and soft now and don't worry if it's a bit sticky as well because you're going to get it on the work surface and we're going to give it a bit of a kneading and there we are there's the dough there you can see look at that <laughs> That's looking marvellous. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to knead it. Now what you want to do is you might want to have a little bit of flour on the side just to have to sprinkle over it if you want. And you want to keep kneading that now. And it depends on how vigorous you are. I would say at least about five minutes, maybe about ten. But really it just depends. If you, you know, kneading's a, a kind of, a, I suppose it's a bit of a, a bit relative. It's a bit of a matter of opinion uh, because um, you could have a, bit of a tired day and you could be kneading like that and then maybe you'd have a really strong day when you're going oh, really giving it some right really giving it some welly so it is down to the individual um i'm quite vigorous and i like to just really pummel it and give it a good stretching out and a good kneading right i've kneaded the dough i just wanted to show you what it looks like look at that that's a beauty press it bounces back 
that's what you're looking for nice silky squidgy soft dough don't worry if it's still a little bit sticky that's absolutely fine you're now going to let that prove you're going to put it back in your bowl with a little bit of olive oil in there cover it with cling film it's a sunny day i'm going to stick it outside in the sun then we're going to go over what ingredients to put in your pide okay so while that dough proves we're going to have a quick talk about ingredients now anything goes you can put vegetables in there you can make it vegetarian you can put meat in there i'm going to show you what i've got i whipped up this aubergine sort of tomato -y, aubergine stewy type thing today earlier on this morning uh, and it's just got tomato paste in there i put a bit of za'atar in there give it a bit of zinginess so it's got thyme and sesame seeds it's got sumac in there the aubergines olive oil nice and simple and that will be a fantastic little addition to the pide i've got sauteed courgettes in there as well again i just cut them in half sliced them up Put them in a pan, bit of olive oil, job done. Don't forget your herbs. So I've got parsley in here, I've got coriander. You can use fresh mint. Uh, you can use spinach. Spinach works fantastically well. But just make sure that you boil the spinach, um, just cook it or wilt it, steam it, whatever it is, and then squeeze out all the water. Make sure the spinach is quite dry. Now, I've also got last night's leftovers. So I made the kids a bolognese and I'm using that. So as a mince, and you can use mince meat, so fried off mince, fried onions, whatever. But if you've got last night's bolognese left over, fantastic. Of course, what makes it a pizza, essentially sort of similar to a pizza, is cheese. So I've got Turkish white cheese here. You can use feta cheese, whatever. Um, and of course, cheddar i've got a bit of cheddar you can put halloumi in there as well uh, you could use the italian cheese i've got a bit of mozzarella uh, you could put a bit of provolone in there um you know you could even go for a, a spanish cheese whatever it is uh bung it in there you can even put a bit of stilt and a bit of brie i mean whatever you fancy really but i've got good old-fashioned cheddar and i've got some turkish white cheese so has proved so i left it for a good hour in the sun you know if you haven't got a garden you can't put it outside that's fine put it by a windowsill or put your oven on and just have it sitting at the back of the oven on the top uh, on the stove and that will just do just as fine so i've got the dough here here it is fantastic we'll move that bowl out of the way right now i'm just going to give it a, just a light little kneading kneaded it just for about a minute and here it is it's lovely silky it's got a little bit of olive oil over it it is gorgeous now what you want you want a little bit of accuracy when you're making pide or any kind of bread or bread rolls um you know when i went to little chef school we were made to weigh each individual piece of dough to make sure that we gave each customer the exact right portion and that's what you're going to do here i weighed up the doughs and i've actually managed to get five balls out of this dough so all weighing at around 175 up to 180 each one so there you go so you get five balls fantastic make sure it's in a round circle that's what you're looking for now what you're going to do is you're going to get a bit of flour on your work surface we're going to roll out our dough now what you're looking for actually and that is really to be rolling it out into an oval so what you do is you give it a first roll in just to widen it now remember this is you know uh bread flour uh, bread dough so it is quite elasticy all right so it's gonna kind of stretch out uh, and then it's going to try and shrink back again all right but you can actually pick it up and stretch it out like that by hand as well and really really good pide makers will roll out and then they'll stretch out by hand they are the pros now i have got it into a bit of an oval there you go I'm gonna open it out just a little bit more and you're kind of looking for a thinness of probably about a 50 pence piece so you don't want it too thick you actually want to roll it out it's quite thin sort of 50 pence piece so you can almost like see through the dough there you go I've stretched it out now and you can then just give it another final little roll that's it that's the ticket. So let's fill this baby. 
So I am going to initially start by doing a meaty one. So remember that last night bolognese that I was showing you? Here it is. I am going to whack some of that on. Now what you're looking for is to fill up the centre of the dough. Now let me say a quick something about cooking it. We're going to put it in an oven that's about 220 degrees centigrade. You've got to think about the fact that when you're in a Turkish restaurant and they're making these, they're using those hot, hot, big stone wood ovens that are raging at some kind of 280 degrees centigrade, 300 degrees, those sort of hot temperatures. They're wood fired, big cylinder things, absolutely love them. More like a dome, actually, no, not a cylinder, a big domey thing. And uh, and they bung them in and they cook within minutes. Now, what you want is you want to try and recreate that by getting your oven up to about 220 degrees centigrade. So that's about gas mark seven. And you actually want to put a tray in there so it's nice and hot. If you can't do that, because uh, I'm going to show you how to pick it up. If you can't do that, and it's a little bit difficult, you don't have like a spatula to pick it up with to then pop on the tray, then what you're going to do is just... Do this on your tray. That will be absolutely fine. Now, I'm just putting the mince in. There we go. Okay, so I've whacked a bit of mince on there. And like I said, you want to get, get in there. Use your hands. That's really what you're looking for. Get right in there. Use your hands. And you just want to create this central part of the dough. So you want to leave probably about a two centimeter gap around the edge of course we're going to put some cheese in there so i'm going to do a few little herbs first and i'm even bothered to chop these i'm actually just roughly cutting them up look at that just tearing them and i'm just putting them on okay so i've got a bit of parsley here so i've just roughly torn that put that on now i'm going to use a mixture of cheeses so I'm actually going to put some of the white cheese on there that I was telling you about. So here it is. Here's the Turkish white cheese. So I'm just going to stick that on there. And like I said, feta also works beautifully well. Proper Greek feta works really well too. So I'm going to get that on as well. And then finally, I did grate my cheddar. And, uh, and I'm just going to put some of that on as well. What you want to do is you're now going to fold over the sides then what you're going to do is you're just going to seal the ends so the great thing about a pide is that it has this sort of pointy end so you just seal the ends and that is a pide now what I like to do is I like to use a bit of olive oil just to rub on the sides on the parts of the dough that you can see so I just like to just give that a little bit of a, you know, it gives it a bit of a shine when it bakes. I just like to do that. Now, I've got a rather big spatula. It's called a pizza paddle. <laughs> and this was a rather crazy Amazon purchase that I made a few years ago when I was doing some pizza and pizza cooking with some lovely, lovely guys from Turkey. Uh, obviously you don't need one of these so just use a spatula and this is what they would do they get it on there and I'm going to show that to you there you go look at that look at that baby absolutely marvelous and that is now going to go in the oven on my hot tray I'm going to let that cook for about 10 minutes right they're out of the oven here they are they are fantastic. So I actually made a vegetarian one as well. You want to cut it, use a knife, pizza cutter, whatever it is. Cut it up to serve to your guests. Let's get the meaty one on there as well. So yeah, you want to bake it probably for about 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. Nice high temperature. There it is. That is gorgeous. Oh my goodness me. Absolutely lovely. I have a face. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah. Very little taste. Fantastic. So, stay home with me. Watch the videos. Have a wicked day. 